Here we go once again, exploring the woods trying to find monsters we thought only existed in our nightmares. These people sent in their stories of what they claim to be skimwalkers and wendigos. If you have a story you would like to share, submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that keep this channel going. Now, let's get into these creepy skimwalker and wendigo tales. Let me just give you some background on this story. I was young, maybe eight, but I remember it like it was yesterday. I am now 16. At the time, I didn't know what a Wendigo was, but I am confident I had an encounter with one. Me and two friends, who I will call J and T, were at my friend Jay's house. He lives near an Indian reservation, but we were kids, so we just messed around a lot. I was a year younger than my friends. T was about a year older than the rest of us. We had been playing in the woods behind Jay's house all day. He had a cave-like area away in the woods, and we were shooting fireworks and playing with knives. Yes, I know, very smart. We were playing in the cave, and we heard a noise that was like an ear-curdling scream. Jay said he had never heard it before, and T said we should go back to Jay's, so we made our way back slowly, and as we did, we heard something big lurking in the woods. I was a Bigfoot believer at the time, and said it was probably a Sasquatch, and if we keep going, it would leave us alone, so we ignored it. We got back to the house and had time to forget about the encounter. We told ourselves that it was probably a deer because there are not many bears in Alabama. So, anyway, we were bored and wanted to play hide-and-seek in the dark, so we started to head out the door. We quickly stopped dead in our tracks as we saw something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. It was like a bear, but it had antlers on its head and was on all fours. We panicked, slammed the door and locked it. We moved to my friend's window, and when we pulled back the blinds, it was looking at us. It stood up on its back two legs. It was close to eight foot tall. In five strides, it went from his driveway to the field down the road. That was probably 150 feet away, and we have never seen it again. We still don't like to talk about it to this day, and now that we know what Wendigos are, we think it's one of those, and we won't go into those woods alone ever again. One time a couple of months ago, I convinced my girlfriend Steph to go on a short road trip to California with me. The journey would take about 10 to 15 hours because I lived in El Paso, Texas. The first four or so hours went by extremely well. That's until the car makes a loud metallic noise and the car starts to shake. Unfortunately, the nearest rest stop was about 10 miles away and I wasn't about to walk it. I pulled over and as soon as I got out of the car, I became overwhelmed by a feeling of being watched. I was also met by a horrible smell as if someone left groceries in the hot sun for days. I checked under the car only to be met by nothing but four tires. Then, out of nowhere, Steph screams and I hear a horrible scratching noise from her side of the car. I jumped in the car, and I now figured out why she was frightened. Just before her window, an old lady was screaming and scratching at her window. I did not know what to do in this situation, so I put the keys in the ignition and peeled out of there. As I'm driving away, I look to Steph and her face is pale as she's staring at the rearview mirror. I look back, and I will never forget what I saw. The lady was running at us on all fours. I was speechless. She was somehow catching up to us. Also, when I say I was flooring it, I mean I was flooring it at almost 90 miles per hour. After some time... I figured it got tired as it was no longer behind us. That's when I heard the most blood-curdling shrill, so loud it felt as if it was in the car with us. No one actually believes our story, which is why I'm submitting it to your show. My only question was, who or what was that thing? We were pretty close to some Navajo land at the time, 
and after googling a few things, I feel it might be a skimwalker, but I don't want to be one of those people who just claims it's something that they don't know. If any of you know what this was, please let me know in the comments. I am a female, and when this story took place, I was around 19 years old, I believe. I will also mention that it was 2002, so I did not have a cell phone at the time. I was driving from a friend's cabin in Northern California, down a very dangerous, curvy canyon road in the mountains. It was around midnight when my car started acting weird, and all of a sudden just died. I was able to get off on this tiny shoulder, so I was not in the middle of the road. I kept trying to get it to start, but every time I turned the key, it would make a loud screeching sound. I figured I was just making it worse, so I stopped. Great. It was completely dark, very late, and I was alone in the middle of nowhere. Literally. I had not seen a single car since I had left. As I peered out my window, I had a very uneasy feeling come over me, and I decided at that point I was not getting out of my car until daylight. I locked my doors. There's no telling what is out there at night. Bears, mountain lions, sasquatch, or worse. When it got to daylight, I would set out on foot to find a phone. It was going to be a long night. With that said, I gathered up some of my stuff and rolled a joint. I was about halfway through my smoke session, and I almost fell asleep when all of a sudden, I saw lights. I could see way across the canyon, headlights coming down the winding road. They could not see me as my lights were off. I knew I had about three or four minutes until they came around the last curve and I would be completely visible. I didn't like the way this was playing out, and even though I had told myself earlier that I was not getting out of the car, at that moment, I decided I was getting out. I was going to hide somewhere until the car passed. I grabbed my keys, flashlight and wallet, locked my door, and took off running into the night, using only the moonlight to see. I ran across the road at about 75 feet away from my car and hid behind a tree that was behind a guardrail. Behind me, somewhere probably close, was a straight drop off into a canyon off the side of the mountain, so I had limited options of where to hide. The car was approaching mine now, and I squatted there as I watched it slowly come to a stop. Great, I know most people would be happy to see a passerby, but I had a bad feeling that night and would have much rather just waited till daylight to take care of myself. Call me stubborn and paranoid, but I think it saved my life that night. I was hoping that when the person saw that my car was empty, they would just leave. But they did not. The door of the truck opened and I could see a tall man walking over to my car. When he got close to it, he started moving his head all around, like he was looking for something. He was probably looking for me. I was physically shaking, and really wishing that I had not smoked so much of that joint earlier. The tall man tried to open the driver's side door, and when it didn't open, he started banging on the window, like he was trying to break it. I started to cry. I didn't know what he was going to do. When he finally stopped, he began pacing all around the road, yelling at me to come out. He yelled for probably a full minute, just walked away back over to my car, punched the hood, and got back into his vehicle and slowly drove away. I was so scared that he was hiding just out of view, waiting for me to come out that I hid in the exact same spot until the sun came up. What was weird about this man is when I noticed him walking across the street is that it looked like he had horns on his head, like similar to what you would see on a deer or an elk. He was also incredibly tall as I mentioned, easily 7 foot tall, and looked very gangly and very thin. I decided to go back to my car for just a minute to see if I could get it to start, and thank god I did, because when the sun came up, I was ready to go after being sat behind that tree for so many hours. My foot must have already been on the gas pedal because I screeched my tires as I got the hell out of there. I cannot believe what just happened. I called the police and made a report, and when I finally got home, nothing ever came of it. I'm not sure if that was just some creepy guy with a costume on, or something worse. It kind of reminds me of Jeepers Creepers a bit, how that monster or creature or whatever it was drove around a vehicle. Has anybody ever heard of a Wendigo or a Skimwalker driving? Let me know in the comments.
I wanted to share a true event that happened to me a few months back, but I haven't been able to make heads or tails of what truly happened. Maybe you, or one of your viewers, could give me some sort of idea of what I encountered. So, here's some background. I live in the Adirondack Mountain Foothills area of upstate New York. This area is also famous for some revolutionary battles that occurred, and it was home to Native Americans, as well as Bernie Hatch, who was a notorious murderer that hid victims' bodies up where I live. No joke, Google the Potato Hill murder. So, these foothills of the Adirondack Mountains are covered in dirt roads called fire lanes, but a lot of people go mud bogging and have little fires up there. However, I always walked and hiked these trails since I was a mere child, and now I hike with my trusty yellow lab, who is retired from hunting. Sam is his name. It was the middle of June and Sam and I were hiking and traveling up this dirt road to see dark, dense valley below. The weather was cloudy and a small wind picked up. I was studying fungi and was looking for a puffball fungi to cook later when a weird gust of air hit me and set off my flight or fight senses. It was kind of strange. It got oddly quiet and one side of the forest shifted to the other side. What I mean is squirrels, chipmunks, birds of every type, deer, and even a few wild weasels of sorts were running into the opposite side of the forest, crossing the dirt road, all together like they were all being chased by something huge. Where I was standing, I was on top of a valley looking down into the gulch on the side of a dirt road. I stood up and I stared at my dog Sam who was hackling. All of his hair was standing up straight on his back while staring into the dense forest that was also strangely dark, as if a storm cloud had rolled in. Sam started to take defense and bowed down, growling hair still standing on his point. That's when I realized the air smelled pungent, as if a deer carcass was bloated right next to me. At first, I thought it was a bear, but then I kept hearing mumbling like people were talking to each other followed by a heavy growl. I heard a small voice whimpering like, help me, wait, do you see me? I am a vein technician at a local hospital and love helping people in need, but something just wasn't right about this voice. I just stood there almost mesmerized by the whispering when Sam snatched me out of it. I was in this weird trance and he bit my hand hard to the point that it almost drew blood before he started running up the road towards home. As I started running after him, he stopped and turned around to let me run past him, and let out a few more blood-curling howls that this dog has never made in his life. He then headbutted me to move faster to the house. I heard Sam bark again but then realized he wasn't barking, he was running next to me and nipping at my hand almost to say hurry up. When we got home I locked all the windows and doors and grabbed my pistol, but everything seemed at peace at home with the sun out. I wanted to head outside with my gun to see if anything chased me or if someone was truly hurt, but every time I would go near the door, Sam would go crazy nipping at my hand, and his whimper would turn into a growl, which in all the years I've raised him he has never ever bit me, nipped, or even howled. Do you have any clue what it is I could have run into? Still bothers me to this day. I am utterly terrified at this very moment. I'm not home alone, but my brother is dead asleep and nothing can wake him up. Not even loud music. I will first explain what happened to me last night and then I will begin with what's happening right now. I'm only 15. I'm an Australian and I fear I have a skimwalker stalking or taunting me. Now before I start, I know that skimwalkers are supposed to only be in America, but I do not believe they are only there. I really do believe there is one here. Last night I went to bed normally, at 8pm, scared and terrified for absolutely no reason. I woke up five times from what I can remember. The first time I woke up after a happy dream, in a cold sweat absolutely terrified, scared and paralyzed. I fell asleep from fear I'm pretty sure. The second time I don't really remember, I just remember waking up, still feeling absolutely terrified and in a sweat. The third time. I was terrified, still, I wanted to prove to myself that it was nothing and I was just being an idiot. I sat up and I smelled like I had just run a marathon, I did not care. I got up looking for my dog Choppy, he is an English Mastiff. 
He must have sensed that I was terrified or something, because I couldn't find him where he usually was, on the couch. He was on my floor laying there, staring out my door, completely focused on something. This scared me even more, and I just went straight back to bed. I turned on my phone and realized it was around 3 in the morning. I turned it off and just rolled onto my side and looked at my door until I fell asleep. The previous two times I remember just doing the same thing, waking up and sitting up with absolute dread and terror. I kept looking and making sure my dog was still there. I made him sleep on the bed with me the last time that I woke up. I told my mom and she just shrugged off the whole thing as me being restless. She is a very skeptical person. I have never had sleeping problems. I have never ever in my life woken up with fear, terror, or even sweat. I will now explain what's happening right now. I live in Queensland. I'm not giving my exact location. My parents aren't home because my mom has to pick up my dad from the airport tonight as he works in Washington and gets to fly home every month. I am basically home alone. I don't even want to call out for my brother to see if I can wake him up. So I'm sitting there in silence, only listening to the taps of my fingers on the keyboard, trying to calm myself, and I am scared that even if I leave my seat to do anything, something will come through my back door after me. My parents are coming around maybe 2am tonight, and presently it's only around 8pm. I'm about to cry. My late evening has consisted of cleaning. I like cleaning as it helps me get my mind off of things. I was finishing out the dishes when I heard the dog whimper. It did not sound like any of my dogs, but I checked anyway. Maybe it was Chopper or one of the other three. So I went to make sure that they were okay. Choppy was sleeping and the other three were all asleep as well. I went outside to make sure there wasn't a dog or anything and there was nothing there. This was really odd, but I thought nothing of it, and just tried to play it out as if they were dreaming or something. I do not think it was them. I could still feel eyes on me at this point. I could feel the dread, terror, and everything in me, but I am trying to show that I am calm and relaxed. I don't know if it is working. Something is out there. I can hear it walking, going through our trash. I heard it burp or something. It did not sound like anything I have ever heard. We do not have dingoes in this area, nor do we have any wild or stray dogs that I know of anyway. It keeps growling or trying to talk. Whatever it's doing, I am not complying with it. I'm going to stay planted in my seat. Plus, I do not think, with how I am trembling, I could even walk towards it. Yes, I am that scared. I keep glancing at my glass lighting door and my kitchen window every five seconds. I do not want to move. I'm literally shaking. I feel its eyes are on me now and I can hear something is going through the trash. I have the back door open. I had it open so Choppy could enter and leave freely. He looks terrified. He went out there, and he was barking and growling at whatever it was. So were the other three dogs. He came in and the other dogs just went dead silent. He's sitting on the couch just looking out the kitchen window. We both give each other glances. Even if he is just a dog, we are both looking at each other as if though that we don't know what to do or we're looking at each other like with a what the heck kind of look. I'm going to keep updating people, but before I post this, I'm just going to say whatever it is, it stinks like rotten eggs, dead rotting animals and rotten milk or yogurt all at the same time. It is horrid. I'm sorry if this is scrambled and out of place. I'm just so terrified and hoping that your show can maybe spread some light on this. After last night, I am a believer that skinwalkers exist and still roam freely. I am still terrified of what I saw, and I wasn't the only one that witnessed it. My girlfriend and I had just gotten into our vehicle, and we were about to head out for a drink at around 10.30pm. Now before I continue, I want to paint a little picture of our surroundings, but I don't want to give much information about any specific location or anything like that, just to be safe. I will say we are staying in public lodging in Montana on a hiking trip. Our vehicle is in a fairly vacant lot with a 12 inch fence. We had just gotten into our car as I said before, 
and I turned the vehicle on. The automatic lights flipped on, revealing what I immediately knew had to be a skimwalker. It sprung forward from its previous sitting position and ran about three very fast steps before leaping over his fence. Its body scared the heck out of me. It had light tan skin, but it was very spindly. Think Slenderman build, but it was only about six or seven feet tall. Its arms were long with thin long fingers that looked almost like claws. The head had a human shape to it. It turned to look at us for a brief moment, and there was no light reflecting from his eyes. Nothing, just black. It all happened in less than five seconds. I turned toward my girlfriend, hoping I didn't see what I just saw. She sat there, staring at the fence and could only whisper, Drive. I couldn't. I couldn't move. I kept saying, that, that was a skimwalker. She finally was able to turn towards me and basically scream at me to drive. I got us the heck out of there, and we proceeded to go through the bar and drink away our worries, refusing to talk about it. We got a ride back and got our vehicle in the morning, by the way. She still won't talk to me about it. I think according to legends, you're not supposed to talk about it. I know proving this stuff is really hard without pictures, but I swear on my honor as a man that I'm not making this up or exaggerating anything. Should we just leave the area? I don't know. This was only last night. Feel free to ask questions or give advice, because I'm not sure what to do next. Before I start, I should mention that I am half white, half Mexican male, and this story happened to me when I was 17 years old. My family went to California for a summer vacation, and to see the family we have out there. That year, we decided to go camping in a certain park in Northern California for a few days, and being a Phoenix native, it was a much needed break from the 120 degree heat. All was good for the first few days, until the second to last night there. A group of five to six of us were sitting by the campfire at one in the morning, when we noticed the forest goes dead silent around us. As we all look around at each other, questioningly, we hear the pained, blood-curdling scream of a woman saying, No, 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 ring from the trees to the left of our camp. Not knowing what was wrong or what was going on, we kept our ears open and stayed on guard. A few moments later, we hear the same noise again, but somehow different, more inhuman this time, like a voice being played off of a speaker. We instantly recognized it as the voice of the woman from before. Horrified, we quietly all went to our tents to hide. Eventually, we all fell into a very uneasy sleep. I jolted awake at three in the morning, desperately needing to pee. Thankfully, we were across from the outhouses, so after a quick sprint over to the outhouses and relieving myself, I hear what sounded like scratching on a tin metal roof. I immediately froze, remembering the inhuman howl from earlier that night, hoping they weren't related. Armed with only my phone, I watched the next half an hour tick down, either waiting for the sun to rise or for the sound of the scraping to stop. Suddenly, the light in the bathroom cut out. The timer for the lights had gone out leaving me in the dark, with the faintest bit of light threatening to peek its head over from the horizon, I decided to make my break back to the tent. I made it across the dirt road to the camp when I heard it again. That woman's shriek, but not loud, it had the same intensity and inhuman artificialness, but it was like barely a whisper. Foolishly, I turned around and perked on the metal roof. I saw was a seven foot pale gray creature with three inch claws on all fours and deep sunken eyes staring at me a mere 25 feet away. Its flesh was tightly stretched across its bones. It was completely hairless and lacked any form of genitalia. I was frozen solid as we looked at each other until it took to its right and saw the light creeping up. It stared at me and let out one more agonizing cry that had me haunted till this very day. It sent one last soul-stabbing stare before it vanished into the early morning. As I lay back into my tent silently sobbing and trying to fall back asleep, 
I hear the faint echo of the thing's cry. Needless to say, I didn't sleep at all that night and refused to set foot in those woods again. As we left the campsite that day, we saw a homeless looking woman standing at the side of the road going down the mountain. I didn't make eye contact, but I knew she was staring at me. Once we passed, I casually looked over my shoulder to see if she was there, and she wasn't. But there was an owl who flew close to the ground to where she was. Okay, so a little backstory. I'm part Navajo. My grandparents on my mother's side lived in Arizona, and my grandmother used to tell me about skimwalkers when I was little. My mom relocated to Indiana for college and met my father. I used to go out to visit my grandparents every summer for a week or so with my mom. I never really experienced anything because I was around 12 when I stopped going to visit them, and then a couple of years later they moved here to Indiana when I was around 16 to be closer to us. My grandparents said that they experienced some things when they lived out there, but they won't talk about their experiences. In the last few months, I've become sort of obsessed with learning about them and my current job is pretty boring and I have a lot of free time to sit and think. I've heard from my grandparents that if you think about them, it draws them to you. I don't know if they are prominent in the Midwest, but upon researching them I have found a lot of people who have had experiences here. For some reason, the last few days, the only thing I've been able to think about has been skimwalkers, and if I'll ever see one. Granted, I hope I don't. My grandma told me to stop thinking about them because it can draw you closer to them. I'm just wondering if there is some truth to this. I know it's a reach because they mainly exist in the southeast, but with me having Navajo blood, it just makes me curious. I have periodic dreams or nightmares about them as well. It seems every night it gets closer and closer to my window just looking at me with these yellow glowing eyes. I'm not sure if this is a premonition or just me being too obsessed with something, but I hope this isn't some sort of mind game a skimwalker is playing with me. What do you guys think? Do you guys think talking, thinking, and obsessing about certain things like this can draw them to you? I was driving home from work. I work nights on an Air Force base and stopped by McDonald's to treat myself after my PT test. I had to drive extremely far from my home to find an open McDonald's at 2.14 in the morning. And when I finally found one, I was 30 minutes from home. After getting my food, I started driving home. The entire way home, I felt an extreme existential dread. Like something was off about the road I was on and I felt like I was alone I would never see my wife again. I was on a stretch of highway with trees on both sides and zero cars passing. About 10 minutes of driving with no cars, I saw a stoplight. The light was green, but there was a deer standing under the light. It had been raining and the puddle under the deer made it look like its legs had another joint where its feet should be. And that it was around a foot taller than it should have been. I hunt a lot and I'm very familiar with how big deer get in this part. When I drove up on it, I realized it wasn't the reflection, and that that was just how it was. It was all mutated looking. I went to drive around it as soon as my front bumper got past the deer. My radio, that had previously been playing music, blasted static at max volume out of nowhere. I turned the radio off and floored it. When I turned around, the deer had been previously facing to the right, and it was now facing at my car staring at it. But this time, it was on its back two legs. I went 20 over the speed limit on the way home, cut through privatized housing, and sped over all the speed bumps in the complex to get inside. By far the scariest thing that's happened to me, but I'm not too scared anymore considering that I haven't heard of skimwalkers following people home. At least, I hope not. This story isn't very long or exciting, but my friend was over at my house one night and we decided to go into the woods. The night wasn't very exciting, except for some enormous spiders, which I love. 
but the next day was very different. We were invited to a house party, but my friend decided to leave it and go back into the woods for whatever reason. Once in there, he started exploring, and within a couple of minutes, the entire forest fell silent, which is often a sign of creatures being in the vicinity. And off in the distance, he saw this tall thing that was lanky and had brown fur on parts of it. He swears he got it on video, but I don't have access to that video, so I don't really want to mention it. Oddly enough, his camera immediately distorted after the thing disappeared, and the camera was eternally stuck like that. I always hear screaming and strange whistling noises in my neighborhood, and it's always coming from the woods. I sometimes see this silhouette that does kind of look like a deer, but it's always way too tall to be one, and standing on two feet. I don't want to say this is a skimwalker or a wendigo or a goat man or anything like that, because I'm really not sure. But if anybody has any idea what could possibly be lurking in our woods that mimics voices and looks like a deer on two legs, definitely let me know. Also, if it is a skimwalker, have you ever heard of them distorting and messing up electronics? There are dark secrets in every corner of this world, and to some, it might be hard to imagine just how easily one's life can turn upside down having been exposed to the horrors that are out there. My name is April. My mother named me after the month of spring as she found it to be the most beautiful season to which I was described. For most of my life, I was never acknowledged by my peers for my intellect rather than my looks. I've had my fair share of passes from boys since high school straight on to college. Never was the saying, boys only have one thing on their minds, any truer until I experienced it firsthand. However, those moments made me focus even more on my academics to simply prove that I was more than just eye candy, that I actually had a brain to suit. The day had finally come when I graduated from Arizona State University with my degree in business. Never was I happier to make myself and family proud, as I was now moving out of my own and having taken a job in the field I so longed for. Having desired my own place, I moved into an apartment complex just in the suburban outskirts of the city. Nothing fancy, but a nice rural atmosphere with a great view of the desert. I moved into my one-bedroom apartment, mostly out of convenience as it was less costly, and my parents were helping me with the first couple of months of rent until initial paychecks started coming in from my new job. We were just coming into summer, and the days were getting a lot hotter, typical for Arizona. The apartment complex was gated and mostly had families with young children as well as elderly couples. During my first few weeks there, I noticed there was a young man, probably just slightly older than myself who lived next door. He had a humble demeanor, and was fairly attractive in a mysterious type of way. Despite seeing him every now and then, entering or leaving his apartment, the odd thing was he would spend hours every night sitting on his balcony staring out into the desert with what seemed like extended binoculars. I only noticed this strange habit of his as our respective balconies were parallel to each other's, and it was hard to not catch a glimpse of him from my place. Regardless of his mysterious nature, he was quiet and kept to himself mostly, so it was impossible to say he was a bother as my neighbor. With my work starting to pick up later into the month, my hours were inevitably longer, which meant I found myself back home after dark. One night, in particular, having made it back to my apartment around 10pm, I decided to pour myself a glass of wine after dinner and sit outside my balcony and take in some fresh air before heading to bed. Of course, my nocturnal neighbor was doing his habitual exercise of staring out into the desert. He didn't seem to mind or even notice me as a matter of fact when I stepped outside, but he seemed to have a moderately depressed aura about him. In an effort to be polite and break the ice between us, I called out to him. Hearing me, he perked up from his slouched posture and finally peered over to notice me. I was surprised to how pleasant he became as he stood up, reached across the railings over from his balcony to mine to shake my hand. He mentioned his name was Eric and we chatted for about 10 minutes engaging in quite the pleasant conversation. 
He had a great smile and was charming overall, but looking into his eyes, I could not only sense fatigue, but a hint of sadness as well as... Over the next week or so, we continued to engage in our brief late night chit chats, and despite getting to know him a bit more, there was still an air of mystery about him. One day, however, I managed to get off early from work and made it home around dusk. Eric wasn't outside at the time when I sat on my balcony taking in the view. The colors of the horizon shifted from a prominent red to a faint purple as the sun began setting creating shadows and shades of reflective colors across the vast desert. As the last of the light disappeared and the night encompassed the sky, the sounds of coyotes or dogs emitted in the distance. Feeling tired, I rested my eyes as I reclined in my chair, taking in the cool night air. Laying there, the howling which had started so quickly had ceased, and silence engulfed the desert again. However, what I heard next was beyond odd. Faintly off in the distance, I swore I heard someone utter my name. Thinking nothing of it, I brushed off the notion and tried dozing off. This time I knew it wasn't my imagination as I heard my name uttered yet again, this time only closer. I sat up and listened intently, hoping my ears didn't deceive me waiting to hear my name called again. And to my surprise, it did. I stood up and looked out intensely in the area which I heard the calling. Despite my apartment being on the second floor, and I could see as far as anybody else during the day, the desert area was pitch black at night. The high walls surrounding the complex had lights, but unless someone was within 15 to 20 feet from the exterior, it was pretty much impossible to see. As the voice came closer, I thought I recognized it as being Eric's. Thinking it was him, I answered back curious as to why he was out in the desert. However, no matter what I said in response, the voice only came and said my name in return. Refusing to respond to the voice any longer, I kept peering out into the direction of the voice, hoping to see who exactly was calling me. Amidst the darkness, I saw what looked like eyes, but not human, rather that of an animal in the manner of how light reflected off of them. It was hard to distinguish exactly what it could have been, as my eyes followed there from left to right in the instance where whatever it was seemed to be pacing back and forth. Thoroughly disturbed by what I witnessed, needless to say, I went back inside. I remained indoors for the rest of the night, hoping that it was just my overactive imagination. Things went back to normal for the most part by the next morning and I attended work as usual without giving the weird incident another thought. Despite it all, Eric was on my mind, not for what had happened, but as to why he had broken his routine just as I got back from work. He noticed me just as he came up the stairs, and he was his pleasant self as usual. Being a little envious and hoping to clear my doubts, I asked him in a humorous and playful manner as to what he was doing out in the desert last night shouting my name. Before he could turn the key to unlock his front door, his entire demeanor changed, from casual to uptight as he stared at his apartment door momentarily before turning to face me. His eyes were filled with concern, and he looked at me and asked if I can repeat myself. Mentioning the incident again to him, I noticed his breathing hasten, as a sense of paranoia also set in. He approached me closer, and seemed desperate to know if I was being honest with him about what had happened. I could not further express the reality of the situation as I began to feel myself concerned. His expression of dread soon transitioned to sadness as his eyes bowed to the floor, as if recalling a bad memory or a loss deep in thought. Eric slowly walked back to his door, with his eyes still situated on the floor, but not before he glanced back up at me pleading that I remain indoors at night, no matter what voice I heard calling my name. I equally begged that he explain to me what was happening but he shut himself in his apartment before I had the chance to fully express myself. Eric's reaction to what I had told him solidified that my experience was all too real to discredit at this point. My mind raced throughout the night depraving me of sleep. Even at work the next day I was deep into thought, bothered yet again to make light and piece together these strange occurrences. If there's one thing about me, call it a strength or a flaw, it is my persistence on getting to the bottom of things and leaving no stone unturned. For the next few days, despite not stepping outside my apartment at night, I kept an eye out to see if I saw Eric again. 
at some point, as I was hoping to confront him amidst everything. A week had passed, and not only did I not see him, but neither did I hear his voice calling out from the distance. Never was I a strong believer in the paranormal, so naturally, my mind gravitated to the conclusion that perhaps I was a pawn in some elaborate prank of his. During one of my days off, I was returning from visiting my parents and ended up reaching home later than I expected. It was a little bit past midnight. There were almost no residents outside at that hour, so the complex was quieter than usual, especially in the still air. Passing by Eric's door, there was no sound emitting from the inside to identicate that he was home as I entered my apartment. However, from that moment I closed my door shut behind me, I heard his open. I quickly turned around and peered through my peephole to see Eric casually dressed as if he intended to go out this late with a duffel bag in his hand as he hurriedly took the stairs and was making his exit. Delaying my actions momentarily, I hesitated with the thought of what to do before deciding to pursue him. As I came downstairs to open the courtyard, I realized that he had covered a lot of distance and was heading to the parking lot on the farther end of the complex. Choosing to run, I managed to catch up to him just as I reached his car. We were very much alone and despite his surprised expression, I sought to subtly give him a piece of my mind for possibly tricking me and causing me to feel paranoid. Amidst all my ranting and questioning, I sensed that he was preoccupied with something else as he paid too little attention to me. Opening the back seat and dropping his bag in, Eric urged me to go back to my apartment. For some reason, he was a lot more serious and concerned when he suggested I return indoors. No longer did I try conversing with him rather than turn to walk away. Something was wrong, and I could sense his intentions, whatever he was about to do, would lead to bad results. Little was I twenty feet from him when a voice echoed Eric's name in the distance from the parking lot. I froze in fear. For the voice I heard was none other than my own. I slowly turned back around to face Eric who was also standing still almost in anticipation for whatever was calling him. As my voice rang out again, I rushed up to Eric shrugging his arm as I whispered that he comes back inside. We both looked around the deserted lot, but there were no other people besides us. The voice sounded off yet again, but was followed by a low grumble as it neared us. Gesturing to Eric again that we should both run, he whispered that I need to hurry and get in the car. Before the sound of the growl drew any closer, Eric lunged into the driver's seat and started the engine. Fearful that I wouldn't make it back to my apartment in time, I hopped in the back seat as Eric put the car into reverse as we exited the lot. Making it onto the road, I glared behind us and saw nothing but the dim lights of the parking lot and complex minimizing in the distance. There weren't any other cars on the road at that hour, but for some odd reason, Eric chose to drive in the opposite direction of town out into the desert. Before I could even question his sense of direction, something nudged the right side of the car enough to force the car slightly to swerve. I began to panic as it was obvious we were not alone on this highway. Eric glared around in concern when whatever it was slammed into the passenger side even harder this time. I screamed out in shock and shouted for Eric to stop the car but all he did was accelerate more and frantically urged me to look out through my left. Out on the gloomy roadway, my eyes widened for what I saw was a massive gray dog keeping an unnatural pace with the speeding vehicle. I immediately lunged back to the other side of the car in sheer fright grabbing Eric by the shoulder as he drove faster. I kept glancing to the front and back to see if there were any headlights in sight so that we could at least signal for help. but. There was only the sound of the revving engine and the heavy breathing of the animal keeping pace. The dog became more aggressive as it banged against the car with even harder thuds so much so that it nudged the car so much that we swerved off the road onto the rugged desert terrain. Though Eric managed to gain control of the vehicle we were still pretty banged up when we eventually came to a complete stop. After all the previous tension, there was suddenly a still silence all around. We both tried to get a grip of ourselves before Eric glanced back to see if I was okay. Motioning to him that I wasn't injured from the accident, we each peered around the perimeter of the car to see if the dog was anywhere near. But the darkness just made that impossible. The only logical thing to do was find ourselves back onto the road and drive like hell in the direction of safety. Wasting no more time remaining stagnant, Eric tried to restart the car. But from the moment the headlights came on, the fear returned as the dog was standing directly in front of the vehicle. The creature's teeth were bared, 
as its head bowed low in a vicious snarl while its glowing eyes locked fiercely with Eric's. My eyes welled with tears as I covered my mouth from what I was witnessing. Glancing over at Eric, he appeared to be now more angered than afraid as if he stared back at this hellish creature with an intent to fight it. What happened next scarred my very soul as the dog unleashed an eerie howl and began to contort its body right in front of us. Each of the creature's limbs began to snap like the sound of bones being broken. The growls transitioned from that of an animal to that to a yell of a person. The paws turned to fingers and formed a hand. The outstretched front legs became arms and its snout receded back into its head. Failing to get the car started in time, Eric reached his hand behind and whispered to me to reach into his duffel bag and find his handgun. Despite being paralyzed with fear, I did as he said, but what happened next garnered another scream from me. The creature stood up on its hind legs, right before us, with the upper body of a man whose long hair covered most of his face and was clothed in animal fur of sorts. His legs snapped back into position to human form as Eric groaned through his teeth for me to hurriedly hand him the gun. I tried to focus yet again, rifling through the bag, not before the man began to walk towards the vehicle and over to Eric's side of the car. To my surprise, the duffel bag contained a number of larger firearms, but the moment I located the handgun, I immediately dropped it in Eric's hand. The man had reached the driver's door by now, and Eric swung his hand open back over the front. As soon as I heard Eric cock the pistol, I instantly ducked down in the back seat as he opened fire at the man through the window without hesitation. All I heard were loud pops of the gun and the shattering glass before the man let out an animalistic hellish scream. Frightened, I still dared to look up as Eric unbuckled his seatbelt and got out of the car. As for the man, he stumbled back to the front of the vehicle injured as his body began to contort yet again, and his eyes reflected brightly in the headlights. I wanted to shout at Eric to get back in the car but I was too afraid to even speak at this point. Aiming the gun at the man yet again, Eric fired at him. However, after he was struck by one bullet in his back, the man bolted off on all fours into the desert. His sound could still be heard off in the distance for a long time, like a scream between that of a man and the growl of a dog. Eric circled the perimeter of the car with his gun in hand and intensely looked for any sign of this creature being there or waiting for the creature to return. Finally calming myself enough, I pleaded with him to get back in the car so we could just go to the nearest police station. Eric refused to say a word but instead quietly got back in the car and started again after a few tries. I climbed into the passenger seat as we drove onto the road, headed back the way we came from. My adrenaline was still high, but surprisingly between the two of us, Eric seemed the most unfazed at the encounter. I argued that we should go to the police. However, Eric remained silent. This time, I demanded an answer, and he responded calmly that we should go to the police. What report are we going to make, given that we just had this crazy... Uh, I don't know. This crazy encounter. And how would anybody believe it, regardless of how sincere we are? Despite how confused and scared I was, this was the first thing all night that actually made sense. Who would believe a dog knocked the car off the road and then transformed into a man? Eric suggested that I don't return to my apartment tonight and that he would give me a drive to my parents' place on the other side of town so I was safe. I agreed, but I still had questions. I knew Eric had been avoiding them. Begging him to tell me the truth as we were now driving into the populated areas, he finally opened up. He explained that what we encountered earlier was a skimwalker, an evil shapeshifter of Native American folklore that he was on the hunt for, hence the reasons he was armed with numerous weapons in his bag. The entity was stalking him for a while, and I just so happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Following him so far, I had to ask why such a creature was after him. As it turned out, this was not Eric's first encounter with a skimwalker. For the first time I saw genuine emotion from him as he confided to me that the creature was responsible for the disappearance and possible murder of his girlfriend over a year ago, and despite it stalking him, he had been hunting it ever since. I saw the sadness and pain return to his expression, as I know understood the motive for everything he did that night. 
The very last thing I asked him was the name of the girlfriend he lost, and he quietly responded by saying, Cindy. I live in a pretty rural town in the southeast. There are only two highways leading in and out, and they pass through nothing but woods. It's quite hilly, and there are steep embankments on either side of the road. In fact, most accidents in town occur when someone is going too fast around a curve and gets stuck at the bottom of the embankment. It's pretty serious when that happens since no one can get up or down those crashes without extensive gear. Recently. My husband and I were driving home from visiting his family in a nearby town. It was pitch black, in the dead of night. I think it was around 2 or 3 a.m. We were very close to our house off the highway when my husband spotted something on the side of the road. He told me to be careful of the deer and pointed when I asked where. As we passed, we noticed that this quote-unquote deer was bipedal, but still hairy and about the shape of a too tall human. Its eyes glowed in the headlights, and it was walking up the embankment by the highway with ease. When we looked at the hill, we noticed it was one of those steep ones people couldn't climb, no way. I don't think it chased us. Then again, I floored it after seeing that. Took my roundabout way home too, just in case. Does this sound like a flesh gate, or a skimwalker, or a wendigo? I'm kind of freaking out. This is way too close to home for comfort. This happened back in 2018 in Western Kentucky, and for privacy's sake, I won't disclose the location or any of our names. My brother will be called G, and my grandpa will just call Pops. Every season, my grandfather, brother, and I would head up to a small hotel outside of a town. We would go frequently fishing around the bays and lakes there past nightfall. Around 11 p.m. one night when we were fishing for catfish, we let out a few fireworks before going back to the hotel to sleep. After letting out the fireworks, we heard some sort of demented scream across the water. The only road to where we were fishing was a small gravel road surrounded by dense woods. It wasn't uncommon to see deer or other wildlife in the woods there, as there is a national park less than five miles away and very few people live around there. On the way back, we decided to stop and go stargazing some three miles up the road in a small field. While stargazing, I saw a deer at the edge of the tree line across the field with my night vision goggles. Hey G, a deer. Where? After he had asked, the deer started moving towards us across the field. Skimwalker, he said. Now I don't doubt the existence of such creatures, but I haven't seen one, and I think immediately seeing a deer and freaking out and calling it a skimwalker is kind of lame. I said, wrong area. The skimwalkers are from New Mexico, Pop said. After looking back in the night vision goggles, the deer was now about a hundred yards away. It then stood up on its back legs, which really started to freak me out, and neither G or Pops could actually see it. I think we should go ahead and go back to the hotel. Alright then. We got in the car and went down the road. As I looked out the rear of the windshield, I saw the damn thing standing straight up in the middle of the road. It was about eight or so feet tall. At least that's my best guess. It quickly ran, and I mean ran back to the field. After going back to the hotel, G and I were watching YouTube till about midnight. And after turning on the lights and laying down, I swore I could see something out of the window. It definitely wasn't just a tree or a person, as there would be no trees around, and we were on the second floor. If you know anything about what we might have seen, I'd like to know. After watching some YouTube videos, I reckon it might have been a Wendigo or a Skimwalker, but I'm not sure. So if you are even traveling in countryside at night, don't stop to do anything. You never know what you're going to see. This happened last summer. I just finished my freshman year in college. I am part of the Navajo tribe. After six hours of driving, I wanted to relax and hang out with my boyfriend, some of my friends, and my family. 
My parents and some of my uncles were going to a peyote meeting that was an hour away from my house. I wanted to go, but I knew I couldn't stay up all night, so I planned to stay with my boyfriend, friends, and my younger siblings. We are going to plan to have a game night. Before my parents were about to leave, they called us and all the kids to the fireplace outside. They throw some cedar leaves in the fire as some pillar up in smoke. We bless ourselves for protection and harmony, and even though my boyfriend and friends weren't Navajo, they even blessed themselves. We gave my parents hugs before they left, and they say we aren't going to be back until tomorrow around noon. After they left, I set up the PlayStation for my two younger siblings as they wanted to play Minecraft. My friends and my boyfriend were all playing cards. I let in my three dogs, a black deer headed chihuahua, a basset hound mix, and a res dog mix. We just relax and play around when I noticed the dogs were on full alert with their ears pointing up and looking outside. I have a condition that if there is a strong spiritual pressure, my right hand trembles. It kind of feels like your arm falls asleep with non-stop shaking. My people called us the hand tremblers. Then I heard a woman screaming and something crash. I got up and closed all the windows along with the curtains. As I was doing that, I saw someone standing before some of the cars. It had yellow eyes that glow in the dark. It seemed as though if it was peering into my soul. I shut the curtains quickly. My friends and little siblings were terrified. All I told them was that they can't enter the house so we are fine. That's when I heard it calling my name. Josh, come outside. We need to get hugs. I shake it off as it sounded like my mom. We are at home. Then it started to scream again, something between a coyote and a woman. After a couple of minutes of screaming, it stops. I got up to look around outside. There was a coyote circling among the cars, but it still had yellow eyes. As it moves from my car to my boyfriend's truck, I saw it get up and it was standing on its hind legs. I closed the window and suggested to everyone that we should head to bed as we were all going to sleep in the living room. So we got the mattress from my room and set it up in the living room. My little siblings were scared. I got up and on top of the door hangs a wooden lighter. I rub my hands and fingertips together with ash and walk toward my sibling and rub the ash on their forehead for comfort and protection. After an hour, everyone was asleep when there was another crash as a car alarm started to beep. I got up to look outside. It was my car, and the back passenger window was busted right open. I thought, crap, I remember that I didn't take in any box from the dorm room. In it was my hairbrush. I was kind of freaked out, but my boyfriend wraps his body around me to try to calm me down. I went to the stove to burn sweet grass and pray that nothing will happen to me, and I went into the living room and grabbed my backpack and ate some bitter powder. The next day, I told my parents about what had happened. They said that we should get a medicine man ASAP. He did a quick prayer and blessed the house, my car, my siblings, friends, and my boyfriend. In the next upcoming day, I was feeling sick, not motivated and becoming distant with everyone. I kept having terrible dreams, so my parents called the medicine man again. They did numerous protection prayers. The medicine man burned some cedar leaves and prays. As the fire burns down, he threw another handful of cedar leaves. He looked into the fire to see who did this. It turns out to be an ex-boyfriend from high school who got jealous of me, how I was successful, and how my new relationship was better. The medicine man gave me some herb to burn, and to make tea to help me, and put a protection prayer that anything that happens to me will be given back to the skinwalker that was hurting me. In the Navajo way, that jealousy will have a negative impact on you, and the person you are jealous of. It's very dangerous. The skimwalker may pick up on that and put curses in order to get stronger. Let me begin with saying I was around 7 when this happened. I'm about to be 15 so I still have a very vivid memory of this occurrence. When I was younger, we used to travel a lot for my mom's work particularly in our motorhome. We got to stay for free in campgrounds and take long national park vacations. At this time, we lived in Lake Havasu, Arizona. 
kind of irrelevant, but a preface to the story. We went on a camping trip to the Grand Canyon, Monument Valley, and Petrified National Forest sometime in 2010 or 2011. When we finished our Grand Canyon leg, we headed to the Navajo Nation to get to Monument Valley. On the way, we stopped at a little roadside shop on a particularly desolate area of the highway. My mom and I purchased handmade juniper bracelets from a nice older lady there. As my parents and other assorted families pursued the shop, I talked to one of the forkers. She appeared to be the owner's daughter, I believe, in her early 30s. She had overheard what route we were taking, I don't remember it if I'm honest, and told me to be very careful of a man that haunts the highway at nights. I haven't been able to find anything about it online. I'm very sure that she called him the White Walker, and no, I'm not thinking of Game of Thrones. She described him as an evil white man that stalks the highway at dusk and takes souls. It was a very creepy thing to me, especially since she had only told me and not my parents or anyone else. I thought she was trying to scare me at first, but she was very serious about it, not like she was just trying to entertain me a little bit. I didn't have an encounter that night, but you best believe I watched the road with eyes wide open the entire drive. It was very unsettling out there, and I'm usually at home and, and in the outdoors quite often to be honest. It was just us in our clunky motorhome. We maybe passed two cars the entire drive. We had music playing loudly, but I could tell that if we stepped outside, the silence would engulf you. Please let me know if you have ever had an experience with this legend or know what kind of spirit or legend she was talking about. She never said skimwalker and did not describe from what I've read a skimwalker, but I, I can't be too sure. Thanks for listening to these creepy Wendigo and Skimwalker stories. Honestly, I hope I never experience one of these things while I'm out in Arizona or the Southeast. I will be visiting there quite a bit this year, so hopefully I'll be lucky enough not to see any of these things. If you have a story that you would like to share, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story. If you enjoyed these stories in today's video, please hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss a new video. I upload them almost every single day and all things natural and supernatural. Just a quick update for you all. If you guys are waiting on the next Strange Things I've Seen as a Park Ranger episode, that's coming in the next few days. Thank you guys for the support in all these series. It really does mean so much to see something that I've created viewed by so many people. It's super awesome. Now that we're at the end of the video, we should comment something to confuse people in the comment section. So how about Four-Eyed Cactus? Comment that down below to let me know that you made it to the very end and to confuse anyone who didn't. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.